Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be making some barbecue sauce from just whatever I have on hand and I make it different every time and it really just depends on what I've got and maybe the mood I'm in. But I'm hoping what I can do here is give you several different ideas of ways that you can make your own homemade barbecue sauce depending on your taste and what you have ready to go. Now, if you will forgive me, uh, because of the, the three uh, jugs of wine I have brewing here, this third one is my newest one and it's a, it's half grapes. It's half grape and half apple cider, you know, from our own apples and our own grapes. And the, the, anything with the grape always tends to make more of a mess and bubble over. And so the fruit flies have been out like crazy. So if you see any black dots on my walls or flying around, it's fruit flies. I only just now made myself a fruit fly trap and set it out because I only just in the past couple days started having issues. So um, if you're interested in my fruit fly trap, we all have our different ways of doing it. This is the way I found works best for me. I'll go ahead and link to that video up here and down below so you can see how I do that. And uh, anyway, let's get started. Okay, so right off the bat, typically when I make my sauce, my barbecue sauce, it's made solely with a tomato base. And so since I have a lot of tomatillos, I'm still trying to work through out there before they completely freeze and rot. Then some of them I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping up on because just like everything else in my garden, they were so behind that they couldn't stay ahead of the heavy rains and the freeze that's coming. So some of them have already gone bad. I've had to just leave them. But... I'm still trying to go out and, and at least salvage some. And so what I'm going to be doing to use up, to work through my some of these tomatillos is I'm gonna be using mostly these as my base. I do have a few red tomatoes that I'm gonna be adding also from the greenhouse. These are pretty, my tomatoes are pretty much done. I have some green ones I should be bringing in though um, before it gets so cold that it starts freezing in the greenhouse. But anyway, I'm just going to be cutting these up and adding them to my blender and I'm going to be processing these. My goal is to get two to three cups of the pureed uh, tomatillos and tomatoes all together. So let me finish cutting these up and then we'll continue on with what I'm going to do next. Okay, so as full as this is, I can tell that's gonna be plenty. Now, before I process them, I'm gonna go ahead and add some liquid ingredients now. That will make it much easier when I go to blend it up. So I'm going to use about a quarter cup of the coconut aminos, and I'll link to the ones I get right down below, because I like to buy a gallon at a time, because it's, uh, it's a lot more cost effective. They are more expensive than the uh, Bragg's liquid aminos, which I also recommend. Those are gonna be a lot more salty than these. These are a little bit more sweet and far less salty. But if you're trying to avoid soy, this is the option you wanna go with here. But I still think the Bragg's liquid aminos are just fine, especially if that's the only soy product you're using. Now what I have here is some old uh, triple berry mead that I made years and years ago and for whatever reason it's kind of turned uh, more to vinegar it's lost that sweeter flavor to it now it's tart um, even though it was in this uh, well-sealed bottle for years um, either way it still will make a good vinegar replacement so I'm going to put about a half cup of that uh, whatever vinegar you have whatever homemade vinegar in particular because you know it's going to be healthy and homemade and non-gmo then I recommend using that. And then another thing, and this is optional, um, I always like to, to add something with an alcohol base to it. It just adds a nice flavor. Remember, you're going to be cooking this, so most of the alcohol is going to be getting cooked out of it anyway. So if you're trying to avoid alcohol and its effects, that should not be a concern, to, especially since it's going to be in food. Uh, any alcohol, any percentage that could possibly be left in there is going to be completely absorbed by the food that you're eating. I know that I'm very sensitive now to alcohol since I stopped drinking years ago. And I can tell when there's a little bit and I never notice that when it comes to my food. And so with that, I'm going to put about a half cup of that. And if I didn't say on the vinegar, I'd say up to a half cup of the vinegar. It's also going to depend on how tart you want this. Now, uh, 
the other thing to consider um, is rum makes a really good, if you want it instead of using like a homemade wine, that's what I've got here is a homemade wine. I do this because it's really cheap. I make it from my own homegrown uh, fruits and it's certainly a lot cheaper than buying rum or vodka. But rum is a really good option if you happen to have some on hand, especially a spiced rum, for adding to your barbecue sauce. It makes a really nice flavor. However, you can also make up the difference with that by simply using some different spices and stuff and really adding those in there and kind of bringing out the flavor. And we'll get to that in a minute. So one option I consider for a, I would consider for a sugar would be, you know, because you, your barbecue sauce is typically going to have some kind of sweetness to it. I recommend using maple syrup. I think that would be really good. And at, this is the point that you can add it in if you would like. Or the other option I recommend for adding sweetness to it is a coconut sugar. Now, if you're trying to avoid sugar altogether, you know, or anything that's going to raise your glycemic level, I would say look into the monk sugar. I've never tried it. I find it to find anything that's actually pure monk sugar without that other weird ingredient they like to add in there that I don't think is all that great for you. Uh, it's really expensive, and that's why I haven't tried that. Stevia would also be another option, but I think stevia is one of those things that you really should just regulate how much you use. It should be used incredibly sparingly and not be dependent on as a sugar replacement. I do agree with another commenter that said, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, that we should really kind of consider just cutting back on how much sweetness we think we need in everything. And typically a barbecue sauce can be really sweet. And this is why I like coconut sugar because it adds a lot of good minerals to it without a whole lot of excess sweetness. And even then, I still am only going to use about a half cup. I'll go ahead and add it into that. I was going to add it to the pan later, but I'll add it in since I'm talking about it and I might forget it later. Okay, and then one more ingredient that I'm going to add in here is, and this is again optional, but this is also something that can add sweetness to it. This is doesn't have any sugar added to it. It's just homemade ground cherry applesauce that I've been trying to work through from 2015, and so I've been using it in breads and various things. And so I'm going to put about a cup, which is about what's left in here, of that into this. And that's going to add some thickness to the sauce, some flavor, as well as um, a little bit more of that sweetness so I don't have to depend on any more other sugars. Okay, so let's get this. Oh, oops, I, I forgot two other things I wanted to add. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of cloves, we'll put three cloves of my fermented garlic. And I'm going to chop up, because I want this, this time I want it to be spicy, I'm going to chop up one of my peppers here from the garden and throw that in. So I'm going to go ahead and process this up and I'll be back to you in just a minute. Okay, so now this is all processed up. Now here's the issue with using tomatillos over all tomatoes is that it's not going to make a really pretty barbecue sauce. So one of the things I'm going to do to help thicken the barbecue sauce up is to add some of my home dried tomatoes. These ones on the top are from this year. That will thicken it up as well as add more color. But then you've got your other ingredients that are going to also add a little bit more color and that is going to be your cloves. I would say about a quarter teaspoon to a half teaspoon of cloves. Since I like things pretty with a lot of flavor, I'm going up to at least a half teaspoon of that. Probably closer to a teaspoon. And I would say about a teaspoon of your dry mustard. Some pepper, black pepper, and how much you put in is entirely up to you. I put in about a teaspoon there. Uh, also, uh, I'm going to add some, about a tablespoon of dried granulated onion. These are things that will also help thicken it up. You can use fresh onion if you want and add it to your blender, like I did with the garlic. But I like using dried a lot because when I want something to be thicker, and I don't like to rely on tomato paste because it takes a long time to cook tomato paste down. And that's why you, that's why I like the dried, the dried tomatoes. And uh, also I won't buy canned tomato paste. And then more garlic in the form of a granulated garlic as well. Now, if you're using the coconut aminos like I did, then you may still want to add a little bit of salt, maybe a half teaspoon or so 
of salt just to make up for the difference that if you're using like Bragg's liquid aminos you probably won't need to add any salt to it at all and let's see I'm gonna go ahead and add this is again totally optional I'm gonna add a little bit of paprika for flavor and for color okay so now I got my whisk here let's go ahead and blend these in now this will darken some as it cooks and keep in mind if you're wanting something that has um, has a redder color just stick with just tomatoes because uh, again the tomatillos uh, they just they don't give it the prettiest color but it is one way that you can use them up and now what I'm gonna do with this and like I said as this cooks it's gonna the color should get a little more red because those uh, those tomato flakes are gonna like dissipate in there and then they're gonna color it and then yeah the cooking process does darken it a bit so what I'm gonna do is go put this on my wood stove and so I recommend whatever cooking surface a low to somewhere between medium medium low heat and just go ahead and put it on there and stir it every so often let it cook until it thickens up the way you want it give it a taste and find out if there's any other spices and herbs you may want to add to it so i'm going to go put this on my wood stove and i'll be back when it's done okay so now i've got a jar here i'm going to go ahead and put this directly in a jar because i'm not going to use this in anything tonight for dinner um, i'll probably use it sometime this week and so let me get my i preheated the jar this because this is hot now you can either wait till it cools down and then put it in your jar at any rate i'm just going to go ahead and get that in there now and I will have more than enough for that jar. And there we go. So, um, and then I'll go ahead and jar up the rest of that as well. Now you've got a couple options. If you're not gonna use it right away, if you make a big batch, you can go ahead and can this. And you can use the hot water bath method because of all the ingredients that are in here, it's acidic enough that you should be able to be just fine canning it. Now I've never canned my barbecue sauce because I typically only make it as I need it. This is the first time I've actually made up a bunch like this before I've even needed it for anything, but I have some plans later this week to do some stuff with it. Now, some of the things I like to do with it is use like leftover chicken or leftover beef or leftover venison, whatever it is. I have a bunch of meat left over from either a roast or steaks or whatever. Break or cut that meat up real small or shred it and mix it in with your barbecue sauce. And it's really good to have either on a toasted piece of bread or just non-toasted piece of bread and like a barbecue beef sandwich open face type thing really good it's also very tasty to serve over white rice really good like that and it's also good to add to a pan of like ribs of any kind and then just bake them slowly whether it be in your uh solar oven in your slow cooker or like the way i typically would do it is just throw it in a roasting pan and uh and just put it on the wood stove on a trivet and just let it bake all day of course you still want to check it and make sure it's not going to burn so anyway there's your barbecue sauce and i wanted to mention a couple things that i forgot as i was making it is uh ginger is another great spice to add to your barbecue sauce so i remembered this and then went and add in about a teaspoon of that and then I also had forgot to add in my mixed greens blend because I try to put my mixed greens blend into everything. This is of course optional. It's not for the sake of flavor. It's for the sake of adding more nutrition to whatever it is I'm baking. So this is all garden goods, anything that I grow that's green, whether it be kale or grape leaves or stinging nettle, dandelion leaves, you name it. I've got a video just on this. Uh, I'll go ahead and link to right up here and you can check it out in the description box down below as well. And anyway, uh, just any good healthy greens that are loaded in nutrients, I like to dry them up, blend them together and then put them in anything. I even use them in teas. So I remember to go add this in. And then I also, to make it a little bit thicker, I went ahead and added some more tomato flakes and also to give it a better color so you can turn see it turned out to be a real nice color it's not red but it's a nice deep brown so i like that i'm happy with that the way it turned out and it has a wonderful flavor so other options that you can use uh, for a t if you want to go strictly tomato based yes you can use just the tomato flakes and add in water as is needed 
start with your other liquid ingredients like I used here with the with the coconut aminos the wine and the vinegar start with that mix that your tomatoes in there and then if you need to add water just play with it taste it as you go and don't forget if you're adding other dried ingredients like the ginger the mixed greens the granulated garlic onion anything like that remember those are going to also thicken it up a little bit on its own as well and then other options if you like the whole idea of a fruit base is think of any kinds of jams or preserves that you have put up peach is a really really good one for this or apricot something like that or you can even take some of your home canned peaches or plums and then just drain the liquid out you know because reserve the liquid turn it into syrup for pancakes or whatever if you want and then take the fruit and then process it up and then use that in your in your sauce just think of just some things that you have on hand barbecue sauce is really easy to make there's not one way to do it there's so many ways you can do it to have it suit your taste and whatever it is that you already have growing or have excess of in your pantry or from your garden or whatever all right well that's it i hope you enjoyed my video on making your own homemade barbecue sauce and that you'll give it a try and start thinking of all the many uses you have for barbecue sauce and what you have in your pantry that you can throw in it. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.